Time right now for us to talk to that man. It is Alex Kaur. He's brought to you by Arbella Insurance and Cumberland Farms, the official coffee of the Red Sox radio network. So I'll ask you the dumb question right out of the gate, because he was joking about it, obviously, and he gave you the sign of 20 as you were walking uh, down the ramp in the, in, the, uh, in the dugout. Did you think at all about bringing him back out in the A's? Um, not after the home run. I think uh, to go out there on a high leverage situation, it's, it's a lot different 3 nothing than 3-2. Mm-hmm. Um, just uh, to go out there and looking for tickets, like he calls it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wants to punch t- tickets in the eighth. Yeah. So 108 pitches coming from the one in Baltimore, although he had an extra day knowing that he's pitching Sunday and he's pitching Friday against the best offense in baseball, so he's not going to be uh, that easy. Plus you you've know? been bringing him along slowly for a specific purpose, right? Yes, to and, to and extend the season. Be disciplined. You yeah. know, we got to be disciplined. Uh, you know, it's funny because – Obviously, people are going to think, yeah, he should have gone, in history and all that. But those are the same people that in August and September, yeah. if he's not pitching, it's fault. then it's my fault because he's been 108 and 125 pitches. Well, be how, killing you. How often, do, how often does, are you talked out of a, of a decision that you make? How often does that happen? Does it have to be – It happens. Is it personality-based, situational? The, uh, there was one, uh, and I think that's when he turned the corner against the Tigers. You know, he, yeah, sure, no, he gave up four in the first two innings, and he had a hundred and something pitches in the six. And when he was coming into the dugout, he's like, "Give me one more, I got it." And I'm like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, I, I got something to prove here." And he went seven, and then after that, he went six, he went eight, he went seven. So there was something about that start against the Tigers that you know he he felt that, hey, yeah, I I need to go out there. But yesterday. When he was coming in, he wasn't like, give me one more. You know, he, I gave him the, the, the hug. a hug, and he was, he was fine. That was amazing. That was fun to watch. There was at one point in the game, uh, I think it was uh, Arenado, he, got, uh, he popped up to third base on three pitches. And I was like, that, that's good. Because you start looking at the pitch count and the strikeouts and the innings, yeah. and the pitch count was getting up there, and I wanted him to go as far as possible. So... It was a fun night, but it's, it's not an easy one because you know where he's at and history of the game, but at the same time, we have to take care of this guy. You know, For us to do what we set to accomplish, he needs to be healthy, and this is part of it. You know, I know people always talk about, you know, well, what's he going to be like in September? I'm like, well, I don't know. Let's see what happens in September. But to me, the, biggest, the best feeling about it is that I would say since August 1st of last year, I wasn't sure. You know what was going to happen with him. I wasn't sure if I was going to see that again. And we've seen it really the last three outings. So is this... I guess the question would be more of the beginning of the season, was it just building up strength to get to where he is right now? Because it, right now he's looking as sharp as he ever has. Uh, honestly, Lou, uh, if you look at the games, I know the stuff wasn't great. But last year, at the same time, the stuff wasn't great. But he was able to command. You know, He was able to throw the fastball wherever he wanted to. He was able to go six, seven innings because he, he was able to command his stuff. Uh, early in the season against C- uh, Seattle, there were some pitches up in, the, up in the zone. They hit home runs. He pitched okay in, in oh, he pitched great in Oakland. Yeah, six innings, one run. The one against the Yankees, erratic in the zone. The one against the Blue Jays here, it was it was bad, but it wasn't bad. You know, a lot of singles. You know, it was kind of weird the first five or six starts for him, but the stuff wasn't as crisp as now. I think location wise, that's the difference. You know, he hasn't walked a guy in the last two. Uh, you know, early in the season, lefties were hitting him, and he was walking guys. And and he's not that guy, you know. He if he's gonna get hit, he he'll get hit in the zone, like in New York. In New York, he got hit because yeah. he left pitches up in the zone. That was up at, up at it. So let me ask you, because I want uh, I'm looking at your team right now, and I see last night. So it is, you know, you go into the game, you got Mitch Moreland, you got a platoon situation there, you got Sandy and and Vasky, and you got Jackie. I'm sure you wouldn't don't want an eight man bullpen all year long. You'd probably like to have that extra guy, but is it twofold? One of you got to get a fourth starter back first, or maybe, do you have to get a body healthy? Or you know what I mean? So it's not like someone's banging on the door. All, all of the above, right? But I mean, I'm just saying because eight man bullpen. I don't know if you thought you'd have one this long into the season because that bench is limiting you. Uh, I mean, I think against lefties we feel a little bit limited, you know, uh, but. Uh, and and because we have guys that usually they perform against lefties and they're not doing that, yeah. you know, uh, Pierce, Eduardo. Although he didn't hit lefties last year, but he, you know, he'll put a quality at bat, and that's what we have right now. Um, it looks worse against lefties because Mookie right now against lefties he hasn't performed. You know, he's hitting under 200. He only has three walks, all intentional, so he's not getting on base. But uh, 
You know, when you have Mitch off the bench, when there's a lefty on the mound, well, it helps you out. Oh, Christian is swinging the bat well, so we're good in that in that aspect. Jackie yesterday, I think he's controlling the zone a little bit more. Seven walks in the last week, so it is where he is. We know we have that bullpen game or Hector and, and the rest of them. So where we at right now, we're comfortable with it. Uh, the days off can are like help us out yeah. here and there. But uh, is it a perfect roster? Not yet, you know. But it's it's getting close to to where we want to be. You know, you talk about uh, you know, as far as like uh, you know, starting pitchers, Eduardo Rodriguez. Okay, here's the guy that's uh, what last six games he's got what it's four zero two point seven eight ERA, and we're talking these uh, four of those are these going into the sixth inning. So is this? And you guys have been coaching him hard. You've been critical of him. He's ha- always had high expectations. Is this the? Are you seeing seeing the fruits of your labor right here? The, the you know the uh, the tough love that you've been uh, you know putting on him. Um, I, I would love to get credit, but it's, it's about him understanding that he can get people out in the strike zone. You know, there's there's guys that have to pitch in the edges of the strike zone. He can get away with mistakes. You know, his changeup is that good. His fastball against righties up and away is that good, and he doesn't have to 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 nibble. You know, O two. Attack the guy, you know, there's a quick out, you know, and he's been doing that. I think his changeup usage in the last one was great, and the location of the changeup was in a great place that he was able to induce these guys to weak contact early in the count, and that's what gonna, is going to make you to go six, seven innings, and he's understanding that. And I think him watching David, David and Chris, and not the stuff, the way they attack hitters, the way they attack the strike zone, he, he's understanding that, yeah, my stuff is different than their stuff, but it's, it's good. And I can get people out in the zone, and he's been doing that uh, good the last two or three. Michael Chavis is getting some big hits for you, and he's hitting some towering balls. I don't know if that was fair last night. Did you think it was, was fair it? from the dugout? I lost it right away, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, please call it fair. Good. And he did. I was like, okay. Well, the good news is the umpires didn't see it either. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why he didn't. That was perfect for you. I remember the week before he, um, he came up here, um, I think Lou asked you the question and said, It was is on this, that off day in Tampa. It, it, right. The is day before kid, he got called it, up. Right. Is this kid? It was in Mexico. Oh, that's right. That's right. Christian that's was right. In Fourier Mexico. was gone. I like the way you keep, you keep notes. So I mean, we are. think Sean McVay has a good memory. <laughs> this guy's got a better memory that than, is than good. Sean I gotta McVay. Give it to you. So you said at the time when Lou was asking you whether he was ready for the big leagues because you might need him. We were looking at the Pedroia situation. You said he is at the plate. I'm not sure he is in the field yet. In the field, he's looked okay here. It so you alive. tell me. What's the difference of watching him now versus what you saw in the, in the spring when you did not think he was defensively ready? Yeah, well, he didn't play that much at second, first of all, in spring training. And uh, it's a different angle. He's used to third base angle. He's not as a shortstop. So he, he didn't have too many uh, – he didn't have repetitions. And I still remember the first ground ball he, they hit to him. I think we were in the road, and he rushed into it. The runner's coming. He bubbles it and yeah. is an error. And then the other day, same play to end the, ga- the game. He slows down, catches it, throws to first. So he's learning at the big league level, but he has good footwork. He got good hands. And we're putting him in spots that, you know, hopefully the ball is going to be put in play in that spot. We don't, we don't expect him to be a Robbie Alomar, kind of like diving and making great plays. But make the routine play, and, and he's learning. The next step, I think, is, is the double play. He turned a good one uh, three or four days ago. He got his uh, right foot down quick, and he threw it when we were in, um, where was it? I forgot, whatever. He got hit on a double play because he kind of like shuffled into the runner, and he threw the ball away. Chicago, uh, it was against the White Sox. It was an error. So he's a work in progress, but he, he, he's good. You know, his baseball IQ is great, and he's willing to, to learn. And you know, so far, so good at second base. We're very pleased with the way he's been playing the position. Yeah, I see it last night. I mean, it's almost like if you make a mistake in her half, he makes you pay. Right? And he's got a good <laughs> idea of the zone. Like that slider, it was like, man, if he throws him another one down the way, this could be a tough one. But he left it in her half, and he made him pay for it. Yeah. He doesn't and, miss mistakes. And, and the thing, Lou, he, he understands uh, his, his moves. You know, he's, he's a guy that he, he works, you know, on a daily basis. He understands what he wants to do. When he's hitting the ball, uh, you know, on the ground too much, well, he has his own drills to get back to hit the ball in the air. He controls uh, controls the strike zone. That's the most important thing, and that's a topic with all our um, all our hitters right now. You know, Rafi Devers. Everybody's talking about his home runs. You know, he only has three, but hey, man, what he's doing right now is controlling the shru- zone and getting his walks and hitting the ball the other way. And if we do that as a unit, we're gonna we're gonna be a lot better offensively. And and we are. 
pretty good right now. If you look at the numbers, we're like top three in on-base percentage, run scores and all that. And I don't feel we haven't clicked offensively. So yeah. we, we're very close to that. And, and when we do that, it's going to be fun. I was wondering last night when, when Rafi went oppo and hit that bomb. The other, I think it was the first one since May of last year. Are you still getting him free ice cream if he does that? No, no, no. It was actually uh, <laughs> it was a Mexican re- restaurant. Uh, the, the gift cards. Yeah. No, no. We don't but do mean, that. You got this we don't do that. No, we can't. We can't yeah. get him heavy anymore. <laughs> Twenty-two <laughs> years old. He looks good right, right now. Don't he he looks great, Mexican, huh? Baby, yeah. And I don't yeah. know what he does, but he hits his head. He did it about ten times last night. But he's yeah. twenty-two years old, leading the American League in hitting right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Is it just controlling the strike zone for him? Yes. And and you know when when he's using his hands and they're trying to do too much. Uh, he can hit li- uh, line drives everywhere. You know, he's been pulling the ball uh, over the first baseman with authority, and now he's hitting the ball up the middle. Yesterday, he hit the ball in the air to left field. And as you know, uh, well, hopefully summer comes here in Boston. Yeah. You know? August, wait. Yeah, in August. Well, in August, you know, he'll hit a few fly balls, and they're going to go out of the ballpark. And uh, it's been fun to watch. It, it, it really is. You know, um, we challenged him to hit third early in the season. We made some adjustments. <laughs> I think he, he found a, a place in the lineup, you know, right after Xander, and he's doing a good job, and we're very proud, you know. He, even defensively, you know, the last week, week and a half, uh, you know, he, he's been working on it, and, and yesterday there was a ground ball, a slow grounder that he came, he, he, he charged, and he actually caught it on, on the left side instead of, like, right in between his legs, you know, and now he's, he's getting it, and uh, he's playing at an all-star level, you know, right yeah. now. He's doing an outstanding job, and... He's only 22. Yeah. So uh, updates on uh, two guys, Pedroia first, and then uh, Price, if you could. Um, David is going to throw a bullpen uh, on Friday, uh, so most likely he's going to start in Toronto. That that's the goal, you know. And uh, with Dustin, he's going to work out again today. He, we got early work today. He's going to hit, move around, and hopefully, if everything goes well, send him on Friday or Saturday to to start his uh, new rehab assignment. So I know you. Um you're always accountable, and I know when you were a player, you wanted your teammates accountable. And I, I wasn't down there after. I just saw a couple beat reporters because these two guys have really been very good for you all year, Workman and Brazier. And apparently they, they weren't around to talk to the media. Is that – or they didn't make themselves available. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know about that. Do you that. address that with them at all? Or when, I, I or? always I, – I talk to them. That, that's something that uh, I want from my players, you know, be responsible, genuine, and transparent, you know. And uh, when you do good, you know, hey, but you, you, you talk about it. And when you're not that good, well, you should talk about it. So, so Workman last night, 94. You know, yeah. and probably the best fastball we've seen in a while. Did that affect the the the, the, the overthrows a couple curveballs? No, one thing for sure, as you know, teams are going to make adjustments. You know, and everybody's been talking about the breaking ball. He's been great uh, so far uh, during the season. So two zero breaking ball to to Blackburn, and he stayed back and he put a good swing on it. So uh, we we might have to you know be more aggressive with the break, breaking ball the upcoming days. You know, because we we're going to face teams that they're doing their homework and they're going to make adjustments. All right, here's the Cumberland Farms question of the week for Alex. It was submitted by Joshua Pransky from Stoughton, Massachusetts. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah, okay. You uh, sound shocked. Yeah, I am a little bit. Uh, which player in the Red Sox right now do you think is the most overlooked in terms of their contribution this year? Raphael Devers. Raphael Devers. Uh, you know, people don't understand how much it's a quick he, answer, means, yeah, he means to our lineup. You know, he creates balance. Uh, it's a quality of bat. His own base percentage against righties is over 400. He's actually handling lefties pretty well. And for a kid that is only 22 years old, and we're asking a lot of him, you know, not only defensively but offensively too, he's been amazing to us. You know what is amazing, though, that, uh, that people have been critical of him, and he was on track for 108 uh, errors or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> but you really can't take him out of the lineup, can you? Because now you – not only do you need him at the plate, but how about his confidence level? People forget he's 22. Yeah. And it's really the routine plays that he's – Messing up right now. He makes the dramatic ones. And he's been getting better. You yeah. know, this guy, he has good footwork, good good arm, good instincts. It's just a matter of being more consistent in a routine play. And when that happens, uh, we're going to have an all-star caliber third baseman. Unbelievable. There's your Cumberland Farms question of the week brought to you by Cumberland Farms. Farmhouse blend iced coffee. Go to weei.com slash manager to submit your question for us to ask Alex uh, Core every week. Uh, one other thing before we let you go. Um, you, we had been asking what you're going to do with all of those pictures, the wall of wins that you had out here down the uh, down the hallway. And apparently you have donated them to the Jimmy Fund for part of our uh, Jimmy Fund radio telethon that we do every August with Nesson. 
And we're hoping there are 119 photos. They're all framed. They're all signed, correct? Most of them, Most of them yeah. Most of them are signed. This is an unbelievable opportunity. Did you know, by the way, they had it appraised? Do you know it's worth three hundred grand? Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I know. You still want to give it? You still want to give I, it up? No. I, I know it's worth a ring and uh, <laughs> a good playoff share. So you're kind of like you're, you're kind of like an artist. You put this thing together, and yeah. it's worth that kind of value. Wow. Yeah, that's that's cool. I mean, I thought about it. I think uh, you know, obviously, uh, this team means a lot to to the city and and the Jimmy Fund, and means a lot to us and everybody that you know has been a part of. Our organization and then all, all others here in the city and I was like you know what uh, why not use it for this and, and, it, and use it for the right for the right cause it, it is perfect and I know an individual probably it doesn't have the room unless you have a gigantic house to put the whole thing but uh, 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 oh you do you do oh, I, <laughs> you do yeah. I'm, da- I'm downsizing He's selling his house downsizing. Sorry. you should so, add this to your house yeah. so how about, but, but how about this how about a business how about one of these casinos how about Ooh. Encore over here? Wouldn't that be something Ooh. special if you had a Red Sox Maybe a Jordan's themed Furniture area? Maybe Jordan's like Furniture that? would be yeah. perfect. I mean, a, a business, it would be absolutely perfect. It's like a museum piece. It would be nice. Yeah. And it, 119 of them, and it led to a World Series victory. Beautiful. Or what did the Trump call great. it? What do they call it in the White House? A World's Cup, uh, series, <laughs> World Cup Series? World Cup Series champ. And they changed the spelling Red of Red Sox, Sox by the yeah. way. <laughs> by, by, by the way, by the way, next time you send guys to the White House, and I know that nothing really happened. It was 10 minutes at was fine. Your players are all good. Send them the averages beforehand so that Steve Pierce doesn't get embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with the president, can you do that? In advance? Leave that alone. You don't know. Right. We'll, we'll bring the stacks next year. Right. Good, see, good seeing you, Alex. <laughs> see, see you, guys. you next week. Thanks. Uh, Alex Core, right here on OMF. Uh,